Hello everybody, happy Friday. Today I am coming at you from Lake Cochrane Recreation Area. I know everybody is very excited and eager to begin their boating season. So today I am going to introduce you to my friend Adam back there and we're gonna talk about boating safety. Hi there, as Cassie mentioned, my name is Adam Banke. I'm the conservation officer uh, stationed in Dual County. Um, kind of roam all over the place, but for the most part, I'm assigned to Dual County. Today, uh, as Cassie mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about boat safety. Seems like uh, it's kind of ramping up already. It's going to be a little bit chillier this weekend, but uh, I know it's it's been kind of crazy already, especially with all the COVID-19 stuff going on. People are kind of getting eager to get out on the boats and out in the water. So. Basically what I'm going to do today is just kind of go through uh, a little bit of our safety that we do or that we're looking for when we're out there on the water and just give you some helpful tips for uh, the summer. One of my many duties as a conservation officer is primarily in the summertime to enforce uh, boating laws. The reason we have laws is obviously so that everybody goes home safely. So. What you'll see a lot of times when we're out there on patrol is uh, we'll just kind of be sitting back uh, patrolling a little bit, watching people. On a lake like this, I'm, we're at Lake Cochran here, it's a very, very busy recreational lake in the summertime. So you'll still see a lot of fishermen out here that are just trying to do some fishing, but you'll also have a lot of people pulling around tubes and, and bouncing around on, on jet skis or personal watercraft. So we kind of just keep an eye on all that. While we're out there, um, we may pull up to you um, just to do a basic compliance check. What I'm going to kind of run through right here is is kind of what we're looking for when we do our compliance checks. So we've got a couple main things that we're always looking for. The main, the first thing is life jackets. So we want to make sure every single person on board in the boat or being pulled behind in a tube has a life jacket. They don't necessarily have to be worn. Um, the only, the only way that they have to be worn is if it's for a child that's under the age of seven and you're going at a greater than no wake speed. So greater than no wake is obviously five miles an hour or if you're out there, you know, kind of, you can see as you're going along, you're creating a wake, um, causing, causing some ripples in the water. Um, but otherwise, that's kind of one misconception. People think that you always have to wear a life jacket um, and that's not the case. One thing we do like to stress though, is a lot of times we'll pull up to people and ask to see life jackets and it'll take them five, 10 minutes to dig through their compartments. If Cassie comes up here, she'll see, uh, I've got kind of, I've got one, two, three, I've got several different compartments within my boat. And if you're in, emerg in an emergency situation and you need a life jacket, the last thing you wanna be doing is just going through, digging through every single compartment within your boat to try and find that life jacket that you need to have. So if you're like me, who doesn't swim very well, um, I wear mine all the time. But otherwise, one helpful tip that I kind of tell all the boaters so that they're not digging through their life jackets, we'll just use this one as an example. Right when you get in the boat to start the day, when you're gonna go out on the water, it's super easy just slide your life jacket right over the back of your seat. That way, if you guys do encounter an emergency situation and you need that life jacket instantly, just grab right behind you and uh, slap that life jacket on. Not only is it important to know where your life jackets are at in your boat, but it's also important to make sure you have the proper size life jackets for everybody that's in the boat. So I've got Three different examples here of all just the basic pullover life jackets. These are kind of designed to, to keep your head afloat above water. But as you see, if you look on the back here, they all have basically a Coast Guard seal on the back here. And this one here says Adult Universal. So it's for someone with more than, that weighs more than 90 pounds essentially. So that's an adult life jacket. This is a youth model life jacket and it says 50 to 90 pounds. And then this one here is a child life jacket. So this one says 30 to 50 pounds. So if I were to be out in the boat um, wearing my life jacket like I always do, this life jacket obviously isn't gonna do me much good. I can't even get it over my head, right? So it's very important to make sure that you have the proper size life jacket as well 
because it's really not going to serve you any purpose if, it, if it's not the correct size. I've got a couple other examples here. Um, this is just a little bit more comfy of a life jacket. This one kind of wears like a vest essentially. Um, but on the inside here, once again, it's got adult, tells you the sizes. Um, so it's really important to look at that. This life jacket here is probably the one that you'll see all of our officers wearing. See, it's a little bit lighter profile. This one has a, a CO2 gauge in it. So essentially we wear it when we're out on patrol all the time. And if we would happen to, to fall in the water, once it hurt, hits a certain pressure, this CO2 cartridge engages and it'll expand, put air inside these tubes here inside our life jacket, and then it keeps us floating. If that doesn't work, we've also got this pull handle down here that we can manually do it so that it expands. So a couple different examples. There's a lot of other examples of life jackets too, but these are just a few of them. Um, you'll probably see them all. The next thing I wanted to discuss is the next piece of safety equipment that we typically look for. All boats that are 16 feet or longer, which this one is the 17 foot, um, are also required to have a, a throwable device. Um, the throwable device most people probably just have sitting on the seat because they think it's a seat cushion. Um, but they can come in a couple different forms. So you've got this one. As you see, it's, it's got here on the back, it's got another label that discusses that it is a throwable device. It's a little different than just your basic seat cushion, but that's what it looks like. Or you've got like a ring version here. This one's a little bit heavier, but you throw it out and it, it floats as well. Um, one thing with these, essentially how these are used, let's say you're in the boat and somebody falls overboard. You grab this and you can throw it at them and it floats and they swim up to it or you throw it directly at them so they don't need to swim. And then essentially what they do is it's got these two little handles on the side. They put their arms through the handles and they hold tight. So what this is going to do is essentially keep them floating long enough so that you can get out there and rescue them in your boat. One thing that we see with these is a lot of people will put them on as a backpack. Mine won't even work. But if I put it on like this, obviously this portion of the throwable device wants to float. So what's going to happen is if I'm floating in the water, my head's going to be underneath the water. So it's very important to make sure when you use these, you have them properly used, put them across your chest and wrap your arms. And the third major piece of equipment that we typically check for when we're doing boat safety inspections is a, is a fire extinguisher. So all boats that have like an internal gas tank or enclosed where vapors can get trapped, like mine, you can't see my fuel tank. It's, it's built into the boat. You've got to have a fire extinguisher on board. Um, for those. It's always a good idea to have one even if your, your uh, fuel tank is exposed. Um, but a couple things with the fire extinguisher, they do expire. So make sure every year before you're going out and making your first trip on the, on the water, you check the gauge. So this one, you can see it's in the green, which means it's good to go. A lot of those fire extinguishers are the smaller ones that have like the pull pin and just the push button on the top. If you keep that pin in, and you push down on the top of your, your fire extinguisher and if it pops right back up, that means it's still good to go. If it stays down when that pin is in, uh, it means it's expired. So make sure you check all that equipment before you get out um, and get into the water. One other thing that's really important to have in your boat, and we don't typically check for it, but we might ask to see it, is an oar. Um, I've been on with the department for about nine years now and there's been a couple different occasions where I've been out in the middle of a body of water and my boat just stopped working. So it's very important to have an oar. I know my first experience I did not have an oar and luckily the wind pushed us into shore where we needed to go. But it's very important to carry an oar in your boat, keep a whistle in there um, just so you can kind of sound other people or give a distress call. Um, Going back to the throwables, I need to make a quick note here. A lot of times, if you guys have ever seen these, this is essentially a bumper that mounts onto the side of your boat so that if you're pulling up to other boats, you don't hit up against the, the other boat. 
these are what a lot of people will give us um, and think that they're they're throwable devices, but they're not. You'll notice on all your throwable devices, they'll have this, this placard essentially on the back that tells you what it is. This is just strictly 100% a bumper that's used to prevent your bolt from getting beat up. All right, couple other things here before I let you guys go. Um, I just wanted to discuss lighting a little bit. As you see, I've got I've got my navigational lights right here below my spotlight um, that I use when I'm out on the water. If if you're operating a boat past sunset, you've got to have your operational lights on if you're still moving. You'll see in the back of the boat, this is a 360 degree white light that you've also got to have up. And if you're if you're just sitting out in the middle of the lake um, and you're not operating, you're anchored up, you still, no matter what, have to have this white light up. It's very important um, to make sure that you have it so that other boats that might be operating out there know that you're available. I know there's been a couple different times, or know that you're out there. I know there's, I've been called a couple different times where somebody drives by a boat ramp at midnight, say, and they see a boat trailer there, but they don't see any boats on the water. So then at that point they call in, you know, search and rescue or the local conservation officer if nobody has heard from that vehicle to go do an inspector and go look for them thinking maybe something happened. So it's very important, even if you're just sitting out there, you've got to have this white light up so that we know where you're at and know that you're okay. One more thing I wanted to discuss here, the propeller of the boat. Um, a lot of times you'll see boats anchor up in the middle of the lake or they'll stop in the middle on a really nice day and let the kids jump off and, and do some swimming. Make sure that you have the boat shut off um, and this thing basically locked in place. This is the very, very dangerous part of the boat. A lot of times you'll see pontoons or even boats. They'll have maybe a ladder mounted back here or something so people are jumping into the water, climbing out. The back of the boat, the, this propeller here can do a lot of damage. It's very, very, very dangerous. So make sure if you're jumping in the water and doing any swimming, that if you're behind the boat, you uh, make sure the boat is shut off and this thing's locked in, into gear so that it can't move. All right, so now we move down here to the swim beach here at Lake Cochran. As you see, we don't have the buoys out right now, but I'm assuming those will be coming here shortly. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're boating, if you're in a designated sw uh, swimming area, no boats are allowed beyond those buoys. So um, obviously our number one priority is to keep the kids safe. We want everybody that's going to be swimming in those areas to be safe. So absolutely no boats inside the zoned off swim areas at any of the lakes. One more thing I wanted to just show everybody uh, before I... I get back to work um, is this throw rope. These things are very handy. I use them, I carry it all the time on my four wheeler or in the ATV when we're on the ice. I also keep one in my boat and one in my vehicle as well. Um, these things, they don't count as your technical throw device, but they're very handy. As you'll see here, it's just essentially a bag with a bunch of rope tied in there. So the way this works. I keep one end of the rope in my hand like this, and then the arm that I want to throw with um, right here. So the best way to do it is if you just, if it's dry, you can just toss it out there right away. Um, so here I got an example. You've got, a, you've got a person swimming out there. You want to try and throw this past them, right? So if they're swimming and struggling, you get this. Toss it out. Hopefully they were right along that line. They grab onto the line and you can pull them in. Let's say you miss, you've got all this rope. Do I need to pull this whole rope back in and put it back in that bag? The easiest way to do it, bring your rope back in. This thing will be full of water so it'll help being heavy instead of going through the time and effort because it takes a long time to put this rope back in there. You grab your bag. Fill it with water the best you can. Then you can toss it right back out there and keep that rope in your hand. So 
So very handy tool. Uh, we use them, like I said, on my ATV. I keep one in my boat and I keep one in my truck. They're really handy to have. I just want to thank everybody for watching the video. I uh, hope you learned a little something. Uh, boat safety is very important, obviously, and, and that's what I wanted to stress. There's obviously more to it, but those are some of the basic things I wanted to discuss. Feel free to give us a call, any, any of your local conservation officer, if you have any questions. Otherwise, every year we, we publish a brand new boat safety handbook. Those are very, very important to pick up, look through, see if anything changed. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll see you out there on the water and, and feel free to give us a call or give us a shout. And there you have it. You are all briefed on how to be safe on the water. Things are starting to ramp up in the parks. So we are cutting down to one video a week. Every Friday we'll be posting at 7.30 in the morning. So make sure to check that out and be expecting that. And I hope to see you in the parks. Come on out. Have a great weekend and be safe if you're going out on the water.